Today's Tuesday, February 7th, and I'm going to keep reading from Book of Isaiah. I skimmed through a little bit of this earlier, and I guess at this point, unsurprisingly, there's really cool stuff in this chapter. It seems like every book, of, uh, every chapter of the Book of Isaiah, there's really cool things happening. So it's a good book to take slowly and just really enjoy the process of working your way through it. Okay, nevertheless, the dimness shall not be such as was in her vexation, when at the first he lightly afflicted the land of Zebulun and the land of Naphtali, and afterward did more grievously afflict, afflict her by the way of the sea beyond Jordan in Galilee of the nations. Interesting that Galilee comes up here. The people that walked in darkness have seen a great light. They that dwell in the land of the shadow of death, upon them hath the light shined. Thou hast multiplied the nation, and not increased the joy. The joy before thee according to the joy in harvest, and as men rejoice when they divide the spoil. For thou hast broken the yoke of his burden, and the staff of his shoulder, the rod of his oppressor, as in the day of Midian. For every battle of the warrior is with confused noise, and garments rolled in blood. But this shall be with burning, and fuel of fire." So very often when I'm reading the Old Testament, I, I get very medieval slash Dark Ages vibes. I think a lot of what they base, just the the way that the media portrays the Middle Ages or the Dark Ages, except when there's magic incorporated in it, you know, think Merlin times. I think that's what biblical times were, were like. And that's just what it seems like when I read the Bible, that it matches the way that they portray what they call fantastical fantasy medieval times. That just sounds like Bible times to me. So this is the next verse, which is so interesting. Uh, For unto us a child is born, unto us a son is given, and the government shall be upon his shoulder, and his name shall be called Wonderful, Counselor, the Mighty God, the Everlasting Father, the Prince of Peace. So there's so much going on in that verse. Clearly, he's talking about Jesus. And I think that Isaiah knew about the millennial reign, that Jesus is going to be the government for the millennial reign. So that's immediately what this reminds me of in different titles. And here he knows the, the divinity of Jesus, too. I think the fact that the fact that one of the titles is the everlasting father to me just shows that he knew the divinity of Jesus because he's saying that Jesus is God and then the prince of peace title is so interesting because the prince of peace is a title here given to Jesus and the satan has his own prince title Satan is the prince of the power of the air. Okay, so I'm going to keep reading. Which is, I think that's why it's pop music, prince of power. And I think prince of power of the air has to do with the fact that Satan uses the airwaves. The, I mean, that even goes into the whole notion of, oh, uh, sound waves are really powerful. And how you can speak things into being with your voice, and how that's related to the fact that so much media gets broadcasted through waves, and it's very related. Prince of the power of the air. Satan utilizes the power of the air, literally, to corrupt the earth. Of the increase of his government and peace, there shall be no end upon the throne of David and upon his kingdom to order it and to establish it with judgment and with justice from henceforth, even forever. The zeal of the Lord of hosts will perform this. So that's just my guess. Leave your interpretation in the comments. Is Isaiah talking about the millennial reign right here? The Lord sent a word into Jacob and it hath lighted upon Israel and all the people shall know, even Ephraim, and the inhabitant of Samaria, that say in the pride and stoutness of heart, The bricks are fallen down, but we will build with hewn stones. The sycamores are cut down, but we will change them into cedars. Interesting here, the brick, talking about bricks and then talking about hewn stones. 
if you're into lost history, fake history stuff, those are big buzzwords. Therefore the Lord shall set up the adversaries of Rezin against him and join his enemies together, the Syrians before and the Philistines behind, and they shall devour Israel with open mouth. For all this his anger is not turned away, but his hand is stretched out still. For the people turneth not unto him that smiteth them, neither do they seek the Lord of hosts. Therefore the Lord will cut off from Israel head and tail, branch and rush, in one day. The ancient and honorable, he is the head, and the prophet that teaches lies, he is the tail. For the leaders of this people cause them to err, and they that are led of them are destroyed. That's really interesting, this verses 14 through 16. I hadn't read this before until just now, but those concepts, I'm really, really enjoying the poetic quality of this and the imagery that you get of both the head and the tail being chopped off. And there is this extra responsibility for those that are in charge. And yeah, so uh, I'm just really, really liking those verses, 14 through 16. It's... Because, I mean, we see that today. The people who should be in charge today, your average pastor is not, in my opinion, doing the things that they should be doing. That's like the head that needs to get chopped off. And then the tail, just the other end of that, the, the openly baffo ones, I'm guessing. Anyways, could think more about those verses. Therefore the Lord shall have no joy in their young men, neither shall have mercy on their fatherless and widows. For every one is an hypocrite and an evildoer, and every mouth speaketh folly. For all this his anger is not turned away, but his hand is stretched out still. So that's definitely a theme that, yeah, all of this stuff really upsets God, and we will be punished for all of these things. But God's hand is always still stretched out for us, and it's up to you to to be the one to reach out for God's hand and you have to be the one to change you have to be the one to go against the the broad way to destruction all of this system all of this satanic baphomet baphomet system that's been built up around us it it is society is the broad way leading to destruction and it's up to you to get out of that get out of that river find the straight and narrow path and it's up to you to keep heading down that path and God's hand will always be there to to reach back and and grab you but if you're going down the broad way to destruction you're not God's hand that's being reached out to you is irrelevant at that point his hand is still being reached out to you you're just off in the Broadway river going off middle of going out to destruction anyways for wickedness burneth as the fire, it shall devour the briars and thorns, and shall kindle in the thickets of the forest, and they shall mount up like the lifting up of smoke. Through the wrath of the Lord of hosts is the land darkened, and the people shall be as the fuel of the fire. No man shall spare his brother, and he shall snatch on the right hand and be hungry, and he shall eat on the left hand, and they shall not be satisfied. They shall eat every man the flesh of his own arm. Manasseh, Ephraim, and Ephraim, Manasseh, and they together shall be against Judah. For all this his anger is not turned away, but his hand is stretched out still. Okay, hope you enjoyed this video. God bless everyone.